Welcome to Four Gospel Church International. Our mission is to lead people to become devoted to Christ, build relationship with one another, and influence their community. We are so glad that you are able to join us for this life-transforming message. Our prayer for you is that no matter where you are in life, you can be better. Now, join us for this inspiring message by Bishop Samuel N. Mensah. We will look at a couple of scriptures and uh, one of the things that I would like to share this morning is on the relationship and we would like to consider some key important things in that area. All right, and I believe that it's going to definitely help us so that we can know exactly what we want God to do with our lives. For the past four weeks, I have received some messages from several of friends and our members and some of our leaders through the social media platform um, in relation to the subject of healthy relationship. And uh, I have actually put down, put together all those messages. So at the end of the day, I'm giving back to you some of the messages. You put it on platform and I have put them together in a message form. Because it speaks well to the subject of healthy relationship. And that is what I want to share this morning with you. So these are collections from some of you, you know, that you posted online and on the various platform. They are not actually my original. Um, some were given by like, other means which I received through email. So to all those who shared some of these valuable lessons, I am grateful and I want to thank you for sharing with us some of these key and important lessons. And it's good when you receive good information like this, throw it into your pastors because they have a better platform that they can use to educate a larger society. Let's rise on our feet as we look at the Word of God together, please. We will look at Proverbs, all right? Proverbs chapter 11. And then I will look at again Proverbs chapter 25. But Proverbs 11, 13. Proverbs 11.13 from the New Century Version. All right, Proverbs 11.13 from the New Century Version. Gossips can't keep secrets, but a trustworthy person can. Gossips can't keep secrets. But a trustworthy person can. And from the good word translation, it says, Whoever gossips gives away secrets. But whoever is trustworthy in spirit can keep a secret. Now we will jump to Proverbs 25. And uh, I will look at verse 9 and 10. If you have an argument with your neighbor, don't tell other people what was said. Whoever hears it might shame you and you might not ever be respected again. Now we will read it from the Good Word Translation. Present your argument to your neighbor, but do not reveal 
another person's secret. Otherwise, when he hears about it, he will humiliate you and his evil report about you will never disappear. That is a very great lesson. Now we will look at Romans 12 verse 10 from the New Century Version. Love each other like brothers and sisters. Give each other more honor than you want for yourselves. Let me read that again. Love each other like brothers and sisters. Give each other more honor than you want for yourself. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you in the name of the Lord. And we pray that your word will prepare our hearts. And we will leave this place challenge, knowing that we have heard from you in the name of Jesus. I ask for utterance and clarity in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. I'm speaking on the subject, six things you should understand about healthy relationships. Six things you should understand about healthy relationships. Number one thing I want to, you to understand is life is a journey. I want you to shout that after me. Life is a journey. Now, what do we mean by life is a journey? As I put these collections of ideas together and looking at the scriptures we have read, I have come to realize that number one, life is a journey. Life is like a journey on the train with stations, with changes of routes and with accidents. Life is like a train where it has several stations. It has several routes that it takes. And sometimes it also comes with some accidents. We bought this train when we are born and our parents are the ones who buy us the tickets when we bought this train. We believe they will always travel with us on this train of life. However, at some of us, the stations, our parents would get off the train, leaving us alone on the journey. They normally wouldn't travel with us to the end of the final destination. When we were born, they picked us on the train and literally they bought the ticket for us and they took care of us whilst the life journey train was going. But somehow along the line, when they go to a particular station, our parents get off the train and then we are left alone on this journey. As time goes on, other passengers will also board the train with us. Many of whom, they will be very significant to our lives. Some of them will be our siblings, our brothers and sisters. They join the train with us. Some are our friends. Some of them are our own children. They also come on board this train of life. And even some of them are the love of our lives. They also join this tree. Life is a journey. Many will get up during this journey and leave a permanent vacuum in our lives. As we travel this path, many of them will get off this journey and they will leave a permanent vacuum in our lives. As a matter of fact, while the train is moving, 
and it gets to a particular station, some will go unnoticed. Some will go unnoticed. That we wouldn't even we wouldn't even know when they vacated their seats and got off the train. And I would like to pause a little bit about on those who sometimes go off the train, get off at the next station, and sometimes we don't even notice that they have left the seat. Because the, not all people who come into your life will stick with you for the rest of the journey. Not all those who come into your life are supposed to end the journey with you. Some just come for a short moment. And when they leave, don't weep over it. When they leave, don't, 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 don't just bruise over it. When they leave, allow them to go. Because they will not be there for a long time. Some are there for a short season. They came either to link you up to a destiny. They came to link you up for something. But when they finish their assignment, they need to live your life. So it is not all friends you keep for life. Am I speaking to a congregation? So just when people leave your life, don't weep and mourn for a very long time. Because if they were to stay with you forever, they wouldn't have left you in the first place. So if they leave, it means that they were not just meant for you. Are you hearing me? If they leave, it means they were not meant for you. So some will leave when you don't even notice that they have vacated their seat. But this train will be full of joy. It will also be full of sorrow. It will be full of fantasy, great expectation. Some of, in the course of this life journey train, there will be hellos, there will be goodbyes, there will be good night. But life is a journey, like a train. So the question is, when there will be hellos, there will be goodbyes, there will be good nights, and there will be farewells in this journey. A good journey then will be helping others to enjoy their journey whilst the train is working and moving. A good journey will be helping others enjoy the trip. Because they will not be on that trip for a very long time or forever. So help the other person on the train to enjoy the trip. Help him to have a fulfilled journey. You help him by loving that person. By building good relationship with all other passengers on the train. And making sure that they will get the best to make their journey comfortable. We are all in a journey. Make the journey of your passenger. The passenger can be your friend, your family member, your siblings your children, make their journey pleasant. Make their journey memorable. Make their journey full of hope so that when you get off your train, you have left eternal memories in their hearts. Say with me, life is a journey. Because that a time will come, you will get off the train. Yet the train will move. Remember I said, when we were born, our parents bought the ticket for us. And they took us through the journey. But a time came in the life of the trip, our parents got off. And we were left alone. And then other passengers joined. They were our siblings. Our brothers and our sisters, they joined the train with us. We didn't invite them, but they came on board that train. 
Our friends also joined. Our colleagues also joined. As a matter of fact, somewhere along the line, the love of your life also joined. And then in addition, your children also joined. But somewhere along the line of this life journey, some will still go off. Some will vacate their seat. But make the trip of the journey of those people comfortable. Let them have a fulfilled journey. Are you hearing me, somebody? You do that by loving people. You do that by, by helping people. You do that by helping people achieve their dreams and the fulfillment of their lives. We are talking about six things you should understand about healthy relationship. So we must live in the best way, adjust your time, accommodate one another, learn to forget some of the issues and the difficulties of life, learn to forgive because somebody must enjoy the journey. Learn to forgive, learn to offer the best of what you have. It is important to do this because when the time comes for us to leave our seat, we should leave a beautiful and inspiring memories to the rest of the passengers on the journey. Now, if I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you a homework. Make a list of the passengers on your train of life. Make a list of the passengers who are on that train you are traveling with. As you leave this place today, and you go back home, make a list of who are the passengers that you are traveling on, with, on this train. But let me even ask you right now, who are some of the passengers you are traveling with in this life journey? Alright? Who are some of the passengers you are traveling with on this life journey? Now, somebody talk to me now. Classmates, yes. Oh. Somebody said pastors. Your children. Your workmates. They are all on board the train of life. Yes, tell me more. Church members. So you see, church members are part of the train that are on board. And we are all traveling. Church members are there. So the question is, what do you do to make the life of that church member more comfortable, more enjoyable, more pleasant in this life journey? Because one way or the other, somebody will, will leave the seat. Are you hearing me? We've had some wonderful people we started the life train journey with. They have left us. They've left the seat. But they've left memories in our hearts and in our minds. Who are some of the passengers on your life journey? Teachers. Who are some of the passengers? Who are the one who witnessed to you and gave you the life of Christ? Alright, yes. Destiny helpers, people who connect you to your destiny help. So these are all people in our life journey. Question, what role are you playing to help people enjoy their journey? Ask a neighbor, what role are you playing to help somebody enjoy the trip? Some of us, we make the journey too difficult, too cumbersome. Too difficult for others to enjoy the trip. Things we must appreciate and understand about relationship. Number two, recognize the humanity within others. Recognize the humanity within others. And this was a quote I came across from some of the things that I gathered from majority of you, or from some of you. This is from Steve Maraboli. He said, every single time you help someone stand up, 
you are helping humanity rise. Now let me say that again. Every single time you help someone stand up, you are helping humanity rise. Mother Teresa made this observation during one of the address she gave. She said, every day of our lives, we have numerous opportunities to connect with other human beings and to enrich both of our lives significantly. She said, every day of our lives, we have numerous opportunities to connect with other human beings and to enrich both of our lives. In other words, my connection with you should bring benefit to me and my connection with you should also benefit you. There should be mutual benefits. She said, and in doing so, we additionally are helping the whole of humanity to rise and to grow stronger. When I add value to your life, I'm not only adding value to you, but I'm adding value to humanity. So recognize the humanity in us. Recognize the humanity in somebody. We are helping the world to become a better place and a better experience for all of us. Help those around you today. My word of admonition to you, wherever you find yourself, whether at your workplace, in your family, in your church, help those around you. Recognize the humanity within others. Their thinking, their hopes. We all have hopes. We all have fears. But sometimes when people are expressing their fear to you, be fair to inspire them and to encourage them. That is why we are human beings. We all have fears that fight against us that we must contend with. That shows our humanity. We all have dreams that we are aspiring to. Help others fertilize their dream seed that it can produce results. I said fertilize your dream seed. You can fertilize the dream seed by your word of encouragement, by your prayers, by your inspiration, by being there for one another. We all have ambitions. We have desires. We have sufferings. And that is the humanity of us. So extend a helping hand and a compassionate heart to one another. Never worry about the numbers. I'm not asking you find 10 people and do that. Just find one person and do that. And when you just find one person to do that one at a time, you'll be investing in one at a time and as a matter of fact, you'll be investing in a society. Just one at a time. Tell somebody, help someone. Tell somebody, help one person at a time. Start with the person near you. No, that's all. You see, you don't need to go very fast. Just start with the person near you. That's all. So recognize the humanity in us. Number three. The third thing we should appreciate and understand about healthy relationship, be careful of false reports. Be careful of false reports. And this was an article I read from Uncle Lebo White. In one of his article. He said, one of his adopted daughters, let me call her Esinam.
was being courted by a man in the foreign service. The young man was very much into her and worked very hard to win this lady. At first, she was this, this uh, she, she wasn't believing what the, the gentleman was saying and she was not ready for him. But as he persisted and as she got to know him better, she became more 